Hey guys, welcome to Yoga Anatomy for Absolute Beginners. So if you're a yogi, or a yoga student, a yoga teacher, or just interested in yoga and how the body works in practice, this is a video to help give a bit of a bit of a kickstart on where to get started with studying anatomy for yoga practice. So let's jump in, shall we? All right. One of the key things, well, let me just jump back on that slide for one second. Here we go. Um, learning the magic of how the body works in yoga practice. So human movement, the way the body works, in my opinion, is just absolute magic. Like when you study anatomy and physiology and, and the, just the sheer complexity of human movement and all the bits and pieces that work together. I mean, we have over 10,000 parts, parts, if you will, in, in um, anatomy. So there's a lot to learn, a lot to go over. Uh, but when you start to get an appreciation of how things work, uh, you just imagine, you just realize just the, the natural, beautiful intelligence of, of nature and of the body and um, <laughs> of, also of just how much we don't know. Okay, so quick little bit about me before we get started, crew. Um, so I'm Drew. Um, so I've been teaching yoga for a fair while, about 25 years. Um, actually started more off in the Chinese um, system of, of Tai Chi and Qigong, a little bit of Kung Fu, uh, lots of breath work stuff. I've had a lot of experience um, in, the, in the fitness space. So I've been teaching classes for over 20 years, everything from group fitness classes, yoga, Pilates, circuits, boot camps, all kinds of different crazy stuff. Uh, and probably in the last 10 years, we've been really focused on the health aspect of of movement systems, particularly yoga, qigong, tai chi, meditation, breath work. And I'm really curious and I'm super fascinated by the interaction in the play between the Western kind of understanding of, of human movement and human body, like in neuroscience and biomechanics and biochemistry and the functional anatomy, how it all, all works together, but also like paying real homage to the traditional teachings and the classical teachings and there's a real wisdom and real intelligence in these teachings. Uh, they've been around for a long time. Uh, yoga practices date back, you know, 4,000 years. Chinese medicine practices, Qigong, um, again, about 4,000 years. And there's a lot of cultural interplay between the two. So um, yoga was actually exported to China back in the day. Uh, so your, your Qigong and, and Tai Chi and a lot of Kung Fu kind of practices have a very much the yoga influence because of the yogis who came across from India. So in my eyes, I'm really curious about the, the, common, the common threads, the principles that underline all these movement practices and what it is that we're really trying to achieve. So not being too dogmatic and getting stuck into one system, um, but just more trying to understand at a deeper level what each system is trying to achieve in their practices. So, and, and particularly when I focus on yoga and when looking at yoga anatomy, looking at all the different kind of body systems and how they are trained in yoga practice, in asana and pranayama and meditation, and then also the kind of the behavioral change psychology aspects or the lifestyle change stuff that comes along with yoga teachings as well, which is also very much embedded in, in Qigong practice as well, which is super interesting. So I'm a, also I'm a registered acupuncturist with APRA, that's the Australian Realtor Body for um, Allied Health Professionals. So if you practice Chinese medicine in Australia, you need to be registered with these guys. And I'm also an accredited exercise physiology for Exercise Sports um, Science Australia. So that's the accreditation body for uh, exercise physiologists. So they're both university degrees, um, lots and lots of study, lots of clinical work. Also, being, I still am working clinically. So... I teach in yoga teacher training courses, but I also work clinically with, with clients. So one-to-one -one primarily is what I do. And my real kind of focus is really helping people restore their health through movement, through exercise, um, pulling the threads of the our modern understanding of neuroscience and what that's telling us, but also coming back to these classical practices. Because to be, to be brutally honest, like uh, a lot of the stuff that, we are figuring out now in neuroscience we've been doing for centuries in Chinese medicine we've been doing for centuries in in yoga practices so there's a deep understanding there so you know it would be it behoove us to pay attention pay close attention to that 
divided. And um, it goes without saying, I'm a bit of an anatomy nerd. Um, and we're going to dig into why you want to study anatomy in a second. All right, so let's keep kicking on. So one of the best places to start is books. All right, so if you go and do a yoga anatomy uh, or a yoga training course anywhere, uh, usually the starting block is 200 hour teacher training. If you want to go and become a teacher, teacher or if you're just interested in firming knowledge of yoga. And generally you're going to be asked to get one of these three books. So we've got the science of yoga by Anne Swanson. We've got yoga anatomy by Leslie Kamenov, and then we've got, um, anatomy for vinyasa and standing poses by Ray Long. Now they're all excellent books and generally what these three are more focused on is the structural and functional anatomy in, in yoga practice. So you're looking at which postures are using, which muscles, which joints are active, what muscles are getting stretched. And it gives you a bit more of an understanding of the movement component, particularly in asana. And generally most people will start a yoga training with asana practice because it's very, it's very tangible, it's very embodied, you get to feel it in, in your practice. And so then you can translate a lot of the actual teachings from yoga via through the kind of the, the door of um, asana practice, which is pretty cool. You can see there, this, this photo here, this is me, and these are all yoga anatomy textbooks. So I'm a bit of a yoga anatomy nerd, book nerd. <laughs> so you can, you can go and jump on Amazon.com and you'll find literally hundreds of different books. And so that can be a little bit overwhelming when you get started. So the one I really recommend people get started with first would be the Anne Swanson One Science of Yoga. I think it's a really good combination of um, looking into the mod our modern understanding of yoga um, and the science behind it. So the kind of like the Western science, if you will, but, but it's also kind of like really paying homage to the kind of classical teachings as well. So you're going to get a nice combination of the two. It's got some really cool kind of digitalized um, illustrations, which make it very clear on which is what and what's happening there. And it gives a nice overview of the systems that are trained in yoga. So when we say system, cardiovascular system, muscular system. So this is the science of yoga. I don't actually know Anne. Um, she's an American yoga teacher and, and presenter. Um, I just like her work. I like a book. I, I think it's really, really cool. Uh, the next one is Leslie Kamenoff. Le Leslie's kind of, he's pretty uh, within the yoga space. He's got a lot of street cred because he, he kind of, um, one of his original teachers was one of the OG kind of yogis from India. So he's kind of got some real good street cred coming through there. Um, his, his textbook's excellent. It's another really beautifully illustrated book. Uh, lots of deep information. It's got some really cool stuff around breathing and stuff as well. So if you're interested in kind of pranayama or breath work, it's got some nice little kind of pieces there on in the first few chapters around breath work. And what all these three uh, books have in common is that they're really going to break down uh, each, each core asana, if you will. And then you can kind of see in this one here in, in Leslie Campbell, if you can see the red muscles here are highlighted. So in this king pigeon pose, you're getting this kind of rectus abdominis uh, line stretched here, hip flexor stretching, and getting some tricep stretching there as well. And some, anterior stretching. So you'll get a bit of a highlight of which muscles are going to be um, active or engaged or tensioned or stretched or um, focused on in, in the practice. So that's pretty cool. And then we have Ray Long here. Ray is a orthopedic surgeon in the yogi. So, and I love the illustrations in, in Ray's. He's kind of got this nice kind of combination of like the anatomy uh, stick figure kind of guy, which is pretty cool. And then some really nice digital digital illustrations, which you've most likely seen online. But also some, like this one, so just some beautifully illustrated and anatomical, almost like life drawing like pictures. So there's a real aesthetic, which I really appreciate having studied visual arts way back when. And I'm not a very good artist, by the way, <laughs> which is why I'm an, an educator and uh, exercise physiologist, anatomy teacher, person <laughs> so this so the, i'd pick one of those three books um just pick the one that kind of speaks to you they're all going to be great and then you can see here we've got a deep stack and some of these books are really classical so we um so got like the bsk Iyengar's a lot of yoga and then we've also got some very modern one like um sensory enhanced uh, yoga for trauma which is a super cool book which is really 
building in the kind of neurological uh, understanding of of trauma and how yoga can really be helpful for it, which is super cool. So, um, moving on. So, why would you want to study yoga? Because it's kind of hard, and this is like a lot of students tell me like one of the barriers that they have and you know the problems they have getting into yoga practice or well, studying yoga is and, and anatomy is, is it's just so much to, to to learn like and it is there's a lot there's a lot to learn um in terms of anatomy but <laughs> the cool thing with anatomy is is that like um evolution is fairly slow so not a lot really changes in terms of like our gross structural anatomy uh so if you're patient and you just chip away at it, you can, you can really build up your knowledge and understanding of, of the human body. Classically, in, in um, yoga, it was never taught. Uh, so particularly in India, in the yoga traditions, they, their, their understanding of anatomy from like the Western concept just wasn't there. They just didn't have that kind of understanding. So it was never taught. But there was more of a um, the teacher showing what to do type of situation versus you analyzing it and understanding each bit, bits and pieces. So it was just never taught. And that did filter into a lot of the Western training for a long time. Like anatomy was kind of glossed over. But Leslie Kamenoff, he was really cool because he was one of the first guys who really introduced yoga anatomy to the yoga world. And so that was really awesome. So, And, you know, that's really cool because that helps us understand what we're doing. When we understand what we're doing, we have more confidence. When we have more confidence, we can practice better and we can teach more effectively as well. Um, some people say that they're not just not smart enough to teach anatomy. Well, um, it's not so much that you're not smart enough. It's just it's a more of a structure of learning, and you need to figure out your own learning style. Like anyone can learn anatomy. It, it's not super super hard, in my opinion. It's just that there is a lot of it, and it needs to be kind of step by step, bit by bit approach. And you need to be patient with it because it does take a little bit of time to learn all this all these kind of terminology and all the all the muscles and all the bones and what they do and their movements. So there's a lot going on. So um, I think anyone can really learn anatomy. It's just like most skills in life, you just need to you know apply the right type of training and the right approach that matches your learning style. Um, will it make my practice better is often another question I get asked. Like why do I need to know which muscles and bones? I don't really care, I just want to practice. Um, and that's actually fine. If, you, if you're just happy practicing and just being in your body and then just feeling out your asana and, and being very experiential, then there's, there's, that's a totally okay way to, to be. Um, but if you want to take a level of understanding of how the body works a bit deeper and then answer a lot of questions of why, why is this doing this? Why does this work? Why don't we do that? X, Y, and Z. Well, when you study anatomy and physiology, you get a lot of those answers. You go, oh, that's why. Aha, uh -huh, I get it now. That's what we're doing. So we should do this, not that. It's probably better if we approach it this way versus this way. Um, and as you saw from my book stack before, there's like so many books out there. So definitely go back to those three core books and you'll be totally okay. So that's kind of some of the barriers that students often tell me about when it's coming to anatomy. When you go to a 200-hour teacher training, you're often you only get about 20 hours of anatomy. So it's not a lot. So it's really just a bit of a, it's like an entree plate. All right. So if you've gone and done a yoga training and you really enjoyed the anatomy part of it and you want to learn more, so you've liked the entree and you want to kind of um, try a main course, well, then that's when I really encourage you to kind of like, let's go, let's get into this stuff. Let's learn about yoga anatomy. <laughs> um, so we got this kind of experiential and body practice versus focus practice and study. So I was kind of coming back to my point a little bit earlier is, you can get really, really, really good at yoga asana and just know how to do it, feel it, and embody it, and that is 100% fine. You can also then have really focused practice and study. And so like you're going into warrior one, warrior one, the back leg is an extension. So extension is going to activate the glute muscle. When you activate the glute max, it's going to neurologically create an in inhibition loop onto the hip flexor on the front, the the rectus femoris, the psoas, the iliacus. And so they're going to be able to lengthen a little bit more to be able to allow you to sink down deeper into your warrior one. So you'll get a deeper, stronger, more um, focused asana. So you can use the anatomy and knowledge to really kind of like figure out what each asana is meant to be doing. 
So then when you're practicing, you know, Asana has got a physical kind of component to it. There's a mental, emotional component to it. There's an energetic component to it. Okay, and um, then there's a breath component to it. So understanding how that all interplays together um, really comes down to understanding uh, your anatomy, really. Like if you understand the anatomy and the physiology, it'll really help you kind of go, okay, this is the goal of each asana. This is what we're trying to do. And um, so let's go and do it. Let's teach it that way. So it's a slightly different approach. Seven stages to learn yoga anatomy while I take a sip of green tea. So different ways people learn anatomy for yoga, uh, personal practice and classes. So you're just going to classes and you're just kind of like absorbing what the teachers are saying. You're feeling it out in your body. Uh, you're, you know, you've got that little bit of osmosis going where the, where the teacher is cueing and you're kind of picking up, oh, okay, so when I'm in this position, when I'm in bridge, I'm actually in a back bend and a back bend is a spinal extension. And then spinal extension is going to engage the lumbar extensors. So I'm going to actually strengthen my lower back. Okay, cool. Got it. So you, so you can kind of pick it up as you go along. And some of my, like some of my teachers are really, really good at their anatomy. And they've just been practicing for a long time, going to seminars and trainings. They haven't really done any formal study. They've just kind of picked it up along the way. So that's kind of that more experiential type of learning, which is totally cool. You can do that. That's fine. So you'll go to the initial teacher training, 200 hours is usually the standard. Um, and then and the next one is you, sometimes there'll be a 350 hour teacher training or a 500 hour teacher training. So the more hours you do in yoga courses, the more anatomy that they tend to focus on. So like in a yoga therapy course, you might do a specific module and with the yoga therapy training that I've done is we did 100 hours in Musco school we tool um, anatomy for yoga therapy. And you put that in context to like an allied health degree, so like physiotherapy, exercise physiology, maybe chiropractic, osteopathy, Chinese medicine, uh, you will do far more in that anatomical study than that, like just a lot more. You know, you're, in, you're basically studying the human body in-depthly for four years. So there's a big jump between the two, all right? Uh, then you've got self-directed study. So that's just going back to the books, jumping online, watching YouTube tutorials, um, uh, doing courses, whatever it is that you want to do, you kind of like pull your own thread and you kind of self-direct your own anatomy study. And that works really well for some people like myself. Um, I can kind of learn a lot about the human body now because I have a pretty broad understanding. And then when I go deep, then I'll find where the expert is in that area and I'll work with them so I can kind of build up my knowledge base as well because I'm still learning, I'm still training, I'm still practicing. <laughs> it's the process. It's always a process. And there's also tutoring. If you do find a good teacher, um, someone who's in your local area, you can always approach them and say, hey, can we do some privates? Can we do some you know, anatomy-focused kind of asana? I really want to understand it and learn it more. You can go to workshops and seminars and things like that. So we've got lots of different ways you can build up your yoga practice. But generally your first point of call will be that 200 hour teacher training. Ten reasons to learn yoga anatomy. All right, so so you want to understand how the body works. If you are the type of person who wants to know why, if you keep asking why, why is that? Why is that? How to do this? What's going on there? Okay, yoga anatomy for you is probably going to be a good idea. You want to know why. If you're the why person, I like the why people's in classes. Uh, one of the things I always love is to ask students what questions have you got. So when we, so I've got a teacher training coming up next weekend. So um, I always love to give students opportunities to go like, what's your burning question? What do you need to know about? And if they ask me a question and I don't know, well, then I'll go and find out. Like, that's my job. I'll go and figure it out for them. And I'll come back and I'll say, hey, look, this is what I found out. And there are some things we still don't really understand. Like anytime we start talking about neuroscience and the mind, um, there's always big question marks there because we're just still trying to figure out how this actual brain valve works. It's, it's pretty complex. We're, we've got a good idea of how some things work, but there's some other things we're like, eh, we're not too sure. For example, breathing. We're really not quite sure how breathing is regulated. We've got some good ideas. We, we've got some good neural mapping and some neural networks, and we know different structures in the brain, midbrain, prefrontal cortex, which kind of seem to control breathing, but how it's all integrated together and, and managed, we still don't quite know. So there's lots of work actually ongoing on that at the moment, which is super interesting. 
when you um, when you teach and you practice with confidence, you build autonomy. So understanding what you're doing um, embodies this autonomy, so you can do self-directed practice, self-directed teaching. Okay? So that's really really important. So if you want to step up your teaching game a little bit, um, or just step up your your personal practice, understanding uh, what each asana is and how you do it structurally, functionally mechanically, energetically, all those pieces, neurophysiologically, when you understand those pieces, what it does, it actually, you can get a lot more specific with what you're doing in terms of your practices. You can kind of like get rid of a lot of the, um, what I call the fluff, the things that actually don't make any sense or a bit contradictory or just kind of there for filler. Um, and sometimes you, you can just do a class where you just want to teach a nice, comfortable oh, class and have no real reason and that's fine but if you want to design a very specific practice where yoga like traditionally very designed one-to-one -one specific for the person well understanding your anatomy is really really helpful uh one of my one of my frustrations with classical training is always it's the it's just because that's how we've always done it kind of answer uh, <laughs> that 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 one kind of is a little bit irritating to me um at the same time it, it tests my patience as well so it's a good lesson in there as well because i understand we're still learning a lot about the body but sometimes i've gone to trainings and i'm like we do know what's going on here um and i bite my tongue and be quiet and go okay i'll just put my time let me teach you the thing everyone's got something to share so a little bit of an ego battle there and that's the lesson i'm pulling out yoga is really kind of good for that <laughs> Okay, so it can help you go deeper into a more personal practice to get that mastery level. So when you do understand, when you're in a down dog, for example, what the actual purpose of down dog is, okay, it's a forward fold. So how does a forward fold actually um, affect the body neurophysiologically? What's the heart rate do? What's the HRV do? What's the blood pressure do? Uh, mechanically, what position is the spine in? Okay. How do you adjust your hips, your knees, your ankles to align your spine correctly so that you can give your space for the diaphragm to dome down, to contract, so you can inhale? Okay. Which position do you need to put your shoulders in so you're not jamming up your neck and you're uh, uh, over, -act, over recruiting your deep neck muscles here, your scaling? And when you do that, what, how's that going to affect the nerves coming out of your neck? So you understand with the anatomy when you understand it it just builds up your ability to go kind of, okay this is what i'm trying to do in this particular posture or this kind of pranayama technique this is kind of what we know about the human body how it works at this stage so this is how we're going to practice and then that can build into your teaching as well so you can be you can be very confident with your teaching saying okay guys we're going to focus on really initiating a parasympathetic your, your parasympathetic response so we want to make you really calm and relaxed so we're going to work on forward folds today this is what we do xyz uh, and it improve, improves in that way it improves your cueing your coaching and correcting and, and the what to do so you, when you understand like for example when you're in that down dog and you're trying to open up the back of the knees and get more stretch in the back of the hamstring calf uh, the calf muscle attaches both to the ankle and to the femur so that's a two joint muscle so what we want to do is work on both joints so you want to work on trying to get the knee a little straighter but then also just try to get that heel down at the same time and what you can do is you can take out the knee part by softening the knee which will then put the focus back down into the lower aspect of the calf more into the soleus complex so then you can kind of get the stretch more into the soleus and the tight soleus may have been what's holding you up from getting a bit deeper down into that, that heel towards the floor type posture. So then you can kind of use these cues with your understanding of anatomy to really increase the level of your coaching and teaching, which is super cool. And that way it takes out a lot of the guesswork because you'll, you'll understand a lot of the whys, a lot of the whys. Keep in mind too that like there's still so much research going on in human movement, human body, physical therapy, physiotherapy, trying to work out how all these things actually work. And one of the problems with kind of clinical studies and research is that when you're doing a, a RCT, a random control trial, particularly with humans, 
you need to decrease all the variables as much as possible so you, you know what you're measuring but in the process of decreasing the variables you kind of like take away the element of the practice because yoga is designed to be an integrated holistic practice so it's kind of difficult to kind of maintain the, con the core of the practice in in research because the active research is you kind of not actually doing the practice and that's the same in chinese medicine it's one of the big problems in chinese medical medicine research is how do you actually research a thing when it's when you're treating the whole system, the whole body, the organism. So, um, but when, but we do know a lot about functional anatomy, functional movement, how the musculoskeletal cardiovascular system works in exercise, and we can apply that knowledge to yoga. So, in that way, you can communicate a lot more effectively to your students. So, you can say, "This is what we're working on today, guys. This is the, the intention of the practice. We are going to be really working on strengthening up our lower back." Lower back strength is super important um, for our spinal health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can, you can build up a good narrative or a good story with your class. So you can kind of teach a story through the class based on your anatomical knowledge and understanding. And then you can weave in, you know, with the skill of the teacher, all the different coaching elements, the philosophical elements as well, the energetic elements um, to create this really amazing experience for your students. Another important one is that you can avoid wasting time. So when you know the purpose of each asana, you can you can really fine tune your practice. So uh, you can avoid repeating the same mistake and not getting there all the time because you're doing the wrong thing, right? Um, so for example, a lot of people are trying to stretch out their hamstrings with, like in this photo here, doing a forward fold um, to get this kind of nice length through the body, but I'll really, to get a good functional hamstring, you want to be able to have a strong posterior chain. So the movement you want to be focusing on is not only the stretch piece, but also the coming out piece and using your legs, these strong hamstring muscles to kind of lift you up out of that position. So if you do that, you guarantee it, your, your forward folds change dramatically. They come from just kind of like a stretching kind of exercise to a stretch and a very very powerful kind of calisthenic base type strength exercise, which was classically how it's always been taught as well. And then another one is you can prevent injuries. So just our understanding of anatomy and how things work in the body. Um, so for example, we know that in this position here, for example, if you're in a forward fold and then if you twist to one side, for a lot of people, that's a little bit too much pressure on their discs in their lower back and that could be a little bit compromising for them. And potentially be injurious. Now, for also a lot of people, that's going to feel really good, amazing. But understanding that that is potentially a, a problem for some folks is really important because then you can then you can kind of uh, relay that information to your students and give them permission to adjust and change, or give them the right cues like how to come out and into the movement safely. Understand the anatomy. You can make mind muscle connections to the body, to the movement, to the breath then you can move in and out of postures with much more efficient technique and kind of have a positive training effect, a eustress training effect where the body's adapting to what you're doing and not getting worn down, so to speak. So we have this kind of concept of wide and deep learning. This is a really cool quote from actually from Google engineers working on artificial intelligence, but I thought it was quite appropriate here. The human brain is a sophisticated learning machine forming rules by memorizing everyday events. For example, sparrows can fly, pigeons can fly, and generalizing those learnings to apply to things we haven't seen yet. Animals with wings can fly. Same thing in kind of anatomy, right? So we, we start broad and we go, okay, muscles create movement, all muscles create movement, but some muscles don't create movement as well. <laughs> Um, some mu muscles are going to create um, big movements, some movement muscles are going to stabilize and just hold position. Some movement muscles actually have different kind of structures, so they have a different job internally. So our heart muscle is different, and our, like our digestive tract, the muscles that line our stomach and things like that are different as well. Perhaps more powerfully, memorization also allows us to further refine our generalized rules with exceptions. So penguins can't fly. So even though penguins have got wings, they can't fly. So even though muscles do create movement, some muscles, when they contract, it's not so much about moving a, a joint, 
maybe it's about holding a joint in position or stabilizing. So when we kind of have, we, first when we learn anatomy, we learn the big broad picture and we understand the concepts and the principles and then we get a bit more specific and a bit more specific and we look at the outliers and the general um, and the different kind of muscles which have very unique properties or specific roles that happen and then we can kind of in, embed that and in, integrate that into our practice. So when you're starting yoga, like it's, it's kind of a, um, a yoga anatomy, start broad, start wide before you go deep. So you want a really nice foundation of knowledge before you go deep. Otherwise, you'll just get totally confused uh, because there's so much going on. Um, if you don't put the layers in the right sequence, then you will get lost. And when you get lost, you feel like you're not succeeding. And when you feel like you don't succeed, you feel like you're going to fail and no one likes to fail. So then you'll stop. All right. So we want to like set you up to be in a really good position to succeed. So um, starting off wide concepts, and then we will drill down into more narrow concepts. The tools of the trade, we've got textbooks. We have a look at textbooks. I'm going to show you this really cool um, resource called OpenStax, another really cool app called Complete Anatomy. And then also you've got teacher trainings and courses which you can do, which I'm sure you can find in your local area. So let's kind of have a look at um, OpenStax. So if you're starting off in anatomy and you want to learn anatomy, this is a great free resource. It's basically a free anatomy textbook online. So if you just go to openstacks.org, you'll be able to find it. Just type it into your search browser thingy and you'll get there. So if you come up here to subjects, and you want to go down to science, because anatomy and physiology is definitely a science subject. Scroll down, you've got all these free courses and books you can do. So we're interested in anatomy and physiology. You click on that. And you can download the entire thing uh, as a PDF, we can view it online. So let's view it online. All right. And if you come over here, you can see that you've got a nice kind of guide of what's going on. This is a really cool um, overview of anatomy and physiology. So if you're interested in, in learning a bit more about anatomy, Feel free to jump on and have a look at openstacks.org. So let's have a look at um, structure and organization of the body. So you can see here, what a cool resource. You know, when I went to uni, I would have paid $120, $130 for a textbook like this. <laughs> and yeah, you can get it for free. It's awesome. So there's no excuses not to start to study, right? So I was going to have a quick with this table in more detail. So let's check check it out. When we're looking at um, the body, it's kind of like um, broken down into these different levels of organisation. It just helps us kind of work out which part of the body we are studying. And when you go and see a specialist, uh, they'll be looking at one particular area of this. And when we when we're doing yoga, we're probably more down here at the organisational level, we're looking at the whole system as one. So before we get to that, let's go back to the top. So we have kind of um, our chemical level and our atomic level. So atoms are things like your electrons, protons, and neutrons. They're our small atomic um, particles. And when they combine, they make a chemical. So like um, um, atoms bond to form molecules with three-dimensional structures. So you can see here we've got a water molecule. So water is H2O. So one hydrogen, hydrogen and then two um, oxygen molecules uh, atoms. So then they combine to make the water molecule. So pretty much all your body is made up of molecules being the small structures. Then molecules combine together to make up um, cells. So things like muscle cells or nerve cells or um, skin cells. And then at when you get a bunch of tish, um, cells kind of Bind together, they create tissue, so like muscle or nervous tissue or skin or bone. And then when you get tissues combined together, you get organs. So, for example, our five primary organs are our liver, our heart, our lung, our spleen, our kidneys. 
So they're combined of different various types of tissues. And then when you get different organ systems combining different um, tissues together and organs together, you get a system. So you get like, for example, the cardiovascular system. So you've got the heart organ, and the lungs and the vascular system all working together. And their job is to basically pump oxygen around the body. And the role of oxygen is to deliver nutrients to tissues and also this important uh, molecule called oxygen, uh, which is really important to help make things work in the body. Then we get down to the organizational level, and that's when you have the whole thing working together as, as one system, one organism. So in um, yoga, we can, we're always working at the organized organism level, you as your body, your whole integrated person. Um, but some specific practices, we can kind of like work on um, urinary, urinary and bladder and kidney. So we want to work on that kind of uh, the filtration system of your body, basically. Kidneys is a cleaning system. It cleans the blood and other kind of uh, tissues in the body, like other uh, like the lymph tissue as well. So it's cleaning, filtering, getting out toxins. So because the organs sit beneath the 12 ribs, um, when we can come forward into a forward bend, we're going to put a slight gently pressure on that, or we're going to do a back bend, we're going to compress it. That's going to, um, because tissue is kind of porous, it's going to act like a sponge, and it's going to give you like a massage effect. So then that's going to stimulate the bladder. So then uh, tissue and lymph and blood and interstitial fluid, all those um, things can move and flow through the body because whenever the tissues um, are stagnant, whenever you don't get blood flow, then you get stagnation, and so you're not getting nutrient supply, and also you're not removing the kind of the toxins or, or the metabolic waste products, so you get a build up and a backup of these metabolites, which the kidney has to work on. So some yoga postures, some asana, we can kind of design practices to really um, enhance the kidney function uh, and then we combine that with appropriate nutrition movement and uh, appropriate kind of mental state and then we start to change how the body works at a physical energetic mental emotional biochemical level um, so you get this more integrated organized approach to the movement so let's have a look at more of some of the systems so here we have it's a really cool app. This is called Complete Anatomy. So it's a exercise app that a lot of medical students, physios, anyone doing allied health will probably come across. Fitness world, yoga as well. It's just a great, great kind of app. And so let's quickly, briefly go through a couple of some of the systems to show you. So here we've got the skeletal system. So the skeletal system is going to be all the bones, the different structures of the bones. So we can kind of go in there and highlight different parts of the bone. So that's the ilium. That's one of the three bones that make up the pelvis. It's pretty cool. And then we can kind of get rid of the skeletal system and we can add in, actually we'll bring the skeleton back. Let's put on connective tissue. So connective tissue is like your cartilage, ligaments, tendons, um, fat, blood. Blood is considered a connective tissue. So we can see here, let's find a really common one. We've got this uh, nice wrapping around the knees, the articular cartilage is kind of like the joint capsule. We've got knee ligaments here. These are all part of connective tissue. So we can kind of really isolate them and go down deep and have a look at them, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got these really strong hip ligaments, which is the hips them biggest joint in the body so we can kind of check that out which is super cool then we can add muscles into it the muscular system so these muscles are the things that kind of create movement so for example if we look at this muscle here this is the adductor muscle one of seven of them adductor longus so you can see the line here this is called the line of pull so when these muscle fibers contract they slide across each other and they create a pulling on the bone. So the muscle attaches here on the, what's called the piriformis, and here on the femur, about three quarters of the way down the femur. So these two are going to be pulled towards each other. 
Now, generally speaking, if this, if the leg is in the like not on the ground, then the leg will come into the midline, which we call adduction, adduction. However, if the torso is nice and stabilized, and you're standing on the opposite leg, um, what what can happen here is when this muscle, uh, sorry, when you're standing on this leg, when this muscle contracts, it can pull your uh, leg up into this direction, which then sucks in the femur into the socket so it stabilizes it. So muscles can kind of work in two directions, which is pretty interesting as well. Then we have the arterial system. So we've got the blood. Let me take away some of the muscles so you can see that. So that's the, that's the big arteries. So look how big this sucker is here. So that's the big artery that comes down the middle of your body and then branches off the left leg and the right leg. And then, of course, we have um, the lymphatic system. So all the green is the lymphatic system. So that's the kind of like the, the drainage, sewerage, cleanup of your body. It's a very important immune part of the immune system. So yoga is really important to stimulate your yoga uh, and your immune system because movement moves lymph through these kind of ducts and through these channels. The so gentle movement like yoga is super good for lymphatic drainage, so it's super good for the lymphatic system, so it helps maintain a clean um, clean body, a detoxified body, and really, really powerful in terms of immune function and just overall health and well-being. Then we have the command center, command and control, which is the nervous system. You can see all the nerves here laying on these yellow ones. Let's take away the arteries so you can see them. We'll take away some of the muscles. So here we go. This is the nervous system. So the nervous system is purely electrical signals coming down from the brain and spinal cord and going out to all the tissues. So every time you contract a muscle, there's a nerve signal, an electrical impulse that travels down the nerve like a wire and then connects to the muscle fibers and when that nerve signal hits the muscle fibers it stimulates the muscle to contract and then we get movement so all movement at some level is an energetic effect and a lot of the chakras are actually corresponding to different what we call plexus of these nerve bundles that are up and down the spine so where you have a plexus you have a really dense concentration of electrical Bioelectrical conducting material, so you get a lot of kind of electrical activity or energy. So there's a real strong correlation to the, the nerve plexus coming down um, the body, and we'll go through that in another video. Then we have the respiratory system, so heart and lungs. This one, so look how big the lungs is. So this is kind of a part of the job of the ribcage is to protect the lungs. So the lung is kind of like the big air sacs when you breathe in through the nose air comes down the down the tube and goes into different lungs and then there are little vessels to connect the lungs and then you basically get oxygen from the lungs it's absorbed onto the blood and the heart pumps the blood around to the body and then the oxygen gets delivered to the tissues you need it oxygen being super important because pretty much all chemical reactions in your body require a level of oxygen to work effectively and efficiently so if you don't have oxygen things don't work very well. So it's kind of important. The pranayama is the practices where we specifically look at how effectively and efficiently we are breathing. And then we look at the digestive system. So this is basically one long kind of tunnel or connective pipe, if you will, from the mouth to the anus. And all this is about breaking down, absorbing and metabolizing all the nutrients that you eat. So when you're eating well, you're absorbing nutrients um, through the gastrointestinal tract and then your body's got the uh, materials and the fuel it needs to do all its work, all its cellular repair and the metabolic activity. So understanding how the, the, the digestive system works can be really helpful. Then we have endocrine system. So endocrine is what releases all our hormones. There are probably a primary one here being the pancreas, which releases insulin, which is a really important role in regulating blood sugar. Um, so blood sugar is regulated by what we eat, by exercise, and by stress. So when we kind of 
integrate yoga practice specifically targeted at regulating insulin levels uh, we can affect insulin with yoga particularly by calming the body by incorporating physical exercise and um, by then also you know behavioral lifestyle modification with the yamas and yamas uh, which is kind of like the philosophy and the ethics of yoga know, practice, if you will, um, so that we're understanding why we're eating things, what our triggers are, and then we work on you know, creating a healthy diet. And then, of course, we also have the neurogenical system, which is our reproductive system. So that's a quick overview of some of the systems in the body. Pretty cool, right? Um, so I highly recommend if you if you like kind of yoga anatomy the this is one of the best apps on the market there's a few others which we'll go and we'll do a bit of review on um, but if just learning an anatomy itself this was the most robust and powerful it's always being updated so anatomy. just um, punch it in and into your web browser and you'll, you'll come up with the anatomy it's pretty easy to find so we'll we can break down a skeletal system and we can go into the muscular system as well. I think we might kind of wrap up today's session. Um, with ways you can kind of support the channel. So today's, today's video is just giving you a good idea of musculoskeletal anatomy in yoga practice and, and how we can kind of start building up our understanding of the body in human movement. Uh, ways you can support the channel, which would be awesome. Uh, you can jump over onto my website, andrewdowler.com. You can find all the things over there, how you can kind of get in touch with me and work with me if that's something you're interested in doing. Otherwise, just simply, if you can like and subscribe and comment, that feeds the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> so people who are yogis who are looking to kind of like get in, increase their understanding of of yoga and functional movement and how this body works, the magic of human movement, um, that can help people find that as well. So that'd be cool if you kind of um, do that. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch. And if you do have any questions about anatomy, how to get started with the yoga anatomy, please drop them down in the comments. I'd love to help you out. Cheers.